So anyway, as we were talking about at the end of the last part, uh, you can indeed switch the gamepad and TV screens with the minus button, which you guys say is hidden, but literally every Wii U game has you switch the gamepad and TV screens with the minus button. So but I don't want to... have I... you ever needed to use it? Uh, like, yeah, it's, it's like I've never needed to use that it's ever. Not, it's, it's not a function that, that a lot of people use specifically for gameplay. It's something that exists for most games so that you can play them directly off the gamepad if you so choose. None of you guys have just accidentally pressed the minus button at any point? No. no. It, it's no. way down there. Yeah. I it, don't. Like, the, the, I, I honestly, I know I'm, I may sound like I'm exaggerating, but I honest to God not. Like, you, I don't. You have I, to. Unless I am told to. I, I may seem like a sheep, but unless I'm told to press the minus button for anything i don't press that minus button it, it's, uh. it's not it's not placed in, the, in in exactly the most comfortable position in fact uh, moving your hand down to just hit the plus button is already more uncomfortable than using a standard analog stick but yeah it's a thing and i think the demo will tell you about it which is weird but oh, Ted, you're supposed to rescue that guy. <laughs> uh, oh no, he is dead. So sad. Um, anyway, you know, so you uh, can uh, switch the... You know what's the... interesting? Well, what's that, Ryan? I would say, do you know what's kind of interesting to me is that the motion control works fine enough in these kind of rail shooters parts, but it also makes me wonder if the Kid Icarus problem is like, what was wrong with letting us use the analog stick as an option? Well, there's the thing. Here's the thing. I wanted to say this in the first part, but we can mention it here, too. You can get away, with the exception of the all-range stages, playing the game like Star Fox 64 for the entirety of the on-range. Yeah, series, and that's what that's what that's what I tried to do most of the time because I didn't yeah. like how the And it, the and it does work for the most part. You know, it's just that when the game requires you to get really precise with a weak point, that's when you have to use the precision aiming with the gamepad. But um, what, uh, one thing I did notice is that if you wanted to play it the 64 way, you can still do that because the reticle still moves when the ship moves, which is how the original Star Fox did it and how 64 did it. Uh, it's just that, like it or not, when you get to all range mode or when you have to be precise with either the R wing, the Landmaster, or the Gyro wing, you have to use precision aiming. And that's what makes or breaks this game for a lot of people is those those few instances where you have to do that they're only a few but they mean a lot because they're the you either do it or you don't well if you care about getting a good score also if you want to go to an extra mission with the the where you fight star wolf you have to lock on a pigma but i'm going to be doing all that later i'm acting as if i'm playing like a first time run uh yeah here. but anyway um if you want to play well, as in, like, get really high scores and whatever, you're going to need to use the game, uh, the motion control so that you can aim all over the place and hit stuff, even in these uh, even in these on-rail sections. Uh, what um, what we were talking about earlier, you can indeed switch the, the viewpoint to the cockpit view on the TV by pressing the minus button. But honestly, I, I can't imagine having that be... Uh, having that help an awful lot, because... Honestly, what you kind of have to do in order to play the game well is look at both screens at the same time. And you can't, if you're just constantly... Which is fine for, which would be fine for the 3DS where the screens are small enough and right next to each other. Yeah, that's, that's true. But the thing is, is that it's kind of weird. Like, it, you need to move... The, the idea is that you've got one stable view on the TV. And if you're moving the gamepad to the right, for instance, um, it, I feel like that would be more disorienting if it were on the 3DS. If one screen was steady when you moved it but uh moved that device but the other screen on the same device was no i i was, just mean the concept of looking at two having to use oh, I, two I, screens at once for gameplay i i understand that and they're trying to do something weird honestly this is like the as we were mentioning before this is like the only wii u game other than like fatal frame that tried to do something out there with the the gamepad so uh props for that it's just a couple years too late. I'll, I'll give them credit for trying but i just don't think it worked very well <laughs> it, yeah it it def it definitely if you I feel like if you once you get it though you really do get it though and you can do some you can do some pretty spectacular kind of stuff like beat bosses in a matter of, of seconds when you know that's, what you're doing. <laughs> that's the tricky tricky thing about motion based control is that you either you, you either get it and you really get it or you don't and you really don't because the whole thing is based on whether or not you can get yourself to a comfort level where the very where the very basic uh, 
movement. Where the lack of where the lack of boundaries doesn't bother you. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it's like uh, it, it, to a lot of people, this kind of thing is going to feel natural and intuitive, but to a lot of people, it's also not. And you know what? I can. Uh, in, in a very embarrassing way, I can relate to both of those things because um, I am really, really good at typing, um, and and I don't I don't say this like in the sense that I, oh I'm good at typing the way that your teacher in grade school taught you to type with your fingers on precisely the right keys all the time. No, I'm horrible at that. I am really, really good at hunt and pack typing, which means uh, I I have gotten so used to just letting my fingers fly all over the place that they automatically find every key on the keyboard as I need them, and I can type really fast that way, and it's great. Typing of the dead, playthrough confirmed. <laughs> Damn right, you're gonna, you need to realize what you just said right now, right? You gotta do typing of the dead. And, and um, but well, I, I am going somewhere with this. A lot of people are really good at typing with a touch screen. Like, a lot of people are really good at typing with a touch screen. I constantly have to have this conversation with my girlfriend where she doesn't understand why I'm so goddamn slow at typing on a phone. <laughs> um, because I am not good at typing on a touch screen. It just You need that feedback? It it doesn't yeah, I need that feedback because if I don't have that feedback, just because of the way that I learned how to type, my fingers will always go off center and I'll wind off very accurately typing the wrong letters. <laughs> um, uh so, so Lewis, yeah. what did you have for lunch today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, sorry, cheeseburgers. <laughs> It'll be like an entire word consisting of the letters next to the ones that I wanted to use. Um, and yeah, so so on a t I I'm horrible at a touchscreen, but all the kids these days they're they're really good at touchscreens. <laughs> I feel old whenever I see someone typing on a touchscreen now. Um, and yeah, so so I can relate to it on those on those levels. Um, I will say that it, it's not that it's intuitive for me, the, the motion controls, because there really is kind of a, a learning curve. I feel like... No, I, I say intuitive, it's kind of the wrong word for what I but, mean. But. Yeah, but they're, they're, I think for even the people who... I think one of the common complaints for people who... Uh, for When people were reviewing this game was is that, yeah, I did get used to the controls, but by the time I did that, half of my playthrough was already over. If you're... If you're... Because... <laughs> If you're just doing a straight front to end playthrough, like uh, you could probably beat the game in under three hours, um, even yeah. on your first time. And so I plug them out. Uh, and if you go back to finish all of the extra levels and whatever, you might be at like five, I think. And then um, getting all the medals will probably take you another five or six on top of that if you're good at this kind of game, which I'm not, so I'm never bothering doing yeah, that. You know, this, this is one of those games where those awkward as fuck, long-ass tutorial levels that games like Devil May Cry 4 had might have actually made some sense. Uh, when you first turn on the game, they have this really long section where you're in the, the game pad, where you're in the R-Wing, and Peppy tells you to, like, move the game pad to look at everybody, and you have to oh. do that. It lasts, like, it lasts, honestly, like, a good five minutes, and it takes forever for you to actually get oh, into that. Oh, so they actually do have the long tutorial, and it didn't help. Great. It's, nope. It's just, it's so, it's, it's not helpful. It tells you, like, what the stuff does, but it's in a completely non-action yeah. space so it's like so you know that you can turn the gamepad to the right to see what's going on to the right but it's not you're still not used to doing that in a situation where you've got enemy fire coming in from behind and you're chasing someone who's turning to the right for instance okay so or right you're, or now you're looking, or you're focused on it trying to pinpoint a boss weakness and then star wolf gets out your ass yeah right, right now i'm having flashbacks to about five or six different sci-fi things i'm thinking simultaneously of mobile suit gundam um halo and uh mass effect <laughs> 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 because of this goddamn ring okay okay because the ring is halo uh no, mobile it, suit it, gundam because well, of the suits it, 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 and it, mass effect because you're controlling a fox no right? no Did it, I it's right? no it, it's all the goddamn space colony in the background because that space <laughs> colony is simultaneously halo the presidium ring from the citadel and mass effect and also every goddamn space colony in the mobile suit gundam series <laughs> Like, I, I know why. It's not because they're ripping any of those things off. It's because of basic, you know, space habitation theory where if you have a ring-shaped colony, it can rotate and simulate gravity. But, yeah, it's it just... That's where my mind goes. Yeah. And, um... 
because I'm sure we're going to be uh, talking about the control a lot throughout this whole thing. I think to Platinum Games' credit, they try to mitigate the potential stress that comes with a control scheme like this because they did tweak a few things from Star Fox 64. For one thing, you're you never fire your lasers faster than you ever do in this game. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty have, quick. They're really quick in this game. Like uh, a simple press on the R trigger shoots about five lasers, and you can spam the hell out of it, which makes you know, draining HP a non-issue. Uh, the char the charge shot always had homing properties since 64. Well, if we're going to get technicals in Star Fox 2. Uh, but in Zero, it goes really fucking fast when you shoot it. Yeah. Like, there's, like, no cooldown on that. And secondly, um, uh, the Nova Bombs had homing capability in 64. That's right? A little bit, yes. Yeah, if, well, a little bit. That's my point. In Zero, they home in just as well as a charge shot does. And... I'm thinking they did that, not just for, you know, generic improvements, but to make sure that you have a, a good enough time with the motion controls, where the laser stuff half of the work for you. Yeah, you don't want to miss a, a Nova Bomb shot, especially, is, oh, is, yeah. is the thing. Um, one thing, control-wise, though, that I will complain about, uh, barrel rolls are on the, the, the right stick. Which is weird. Yeah. Why you got to double tap the right stick? Yeah, it's it's like it's it's very strange. Like you you have to do like weird flicky things in order to do um, in order to do the somersault or U turn. But they've got buttons for those anyway, so I don't see what's the point. Because I'll try to barrel roll sometimes and then accidentally U turn. So yeah. I would have rather that they just had the. Um, I would have been fine with barrel rolling with the stick, like kind of switching it back and forth, because that does kind of feel like you're supposed to be doing a barrel roll. It feels nice, but I would have just liked the ability to turn off U-turns and somersaults on the stick so that I can just use the buttons, because that's what I'm oh, going to be using they had for those a, anyway. They had a perfectly feasible option from the get-go, the L-Trigger, because Assault used only one button for the barrel roll in that game, and it was the L-Trigger. You can or, at the very, or at the very least, let us button map certain things. Yeah, well, almost every game, I feel, should have a button map option uh, anyway, yeah. but um, I feel like in this game, it would this have been This better. game could have really benefited from it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, button maps can be helpful in unexpected ways, and developers should make use of them because their, their default control scheme is not going to be comfortable for everyone. For example, yeah. in, uh, well, I, I'm going back to Devil May Cry 4 here, but uh, you know, a, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, I guess you could say I guess you could say a lot of pro players would know what I'm talking about here. Uh, one of the most one of the most basic things about that is like uh, okay, you wouldn't necessarily think that you'd want to take the gun button off of the face buttons, but it turns out Nero's charge shot is so goddamn useful if you use it at the right times that having it on the shoulder button just makes a whole lot more sense because you can charge it while you use use your melee attacks um another control thing for this though the the walker is very awkward uh it's got this the way <laughs> yeah. it turns is is strange like it's it's a it's, it's, a, it's a it's a tank and you wouldn't think that the actual tank the landmaster would control better in <laughs> <laughs> would control better in all range mode than the walker but you know here we are i just i feel like it you already have a tank platinum <laughs> yeah i i just like I, it this never felt one hundred percent natural to me. No. Um, so I would have liked it to be a little bit, like I mean, because I like the kind of stuff that you're trying to do. It like I, I feel like there's a lot of cool things you can do, in, in uh, with this kind of shooty action in, in in a closed quarters and like certain tricks like switching between the R wing and the walker on a dime are kind of cool to to pull off. So I yeah. enjoy that, but it just. It's just kind of awkward. Also, uh, pressing the Y button, I think it's the Y button. I think to uh, to recenter your 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 control. Uh, best friends yeah. do it all it the is. time. Yeah, you're gonna never gather. never stop pressing that button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my question: What is this gyro wing, which is imprinted with Star Fox logo, by the way? Something so. you can do. Something you can sell to kids at a Toys R Us. Uh, for no, that's not what I'm asking. What is it here for? Why is uh, it oh, here? Okay, <laughs> something you can sell to kids for Toys R Us for five ninety. Uh, Slippy got really drunk. <laughs> yeah, so uh, whenever you have to drop the the little uh, direct eye thingy, um, it's the when you're staring at the TV when it, you're staring at the TV when it's down, 
uh, it'll just cut the it'll the screen will just be stuck on the gyro ring, and you can occasionally see the little thing moving around on the screen. But most of the time, when I'm making the direct eye move around, that's when I'm going to be switching the screen so that you can see what's going on through his eyes. Because yeah. they have some instances where like he goes into enclosed space, and you just would not see anything if you were looking at the TV. So it's mostly for that yeah. that I'm switching. Honestly, the gyro wing is my least favorite part of the game. All it's, it's, it's slow it's and twice. it's slow. Yeah, it's it's only used twice here and uh, the zonus. Self mission. In the zone, playing yeah. the zonus with the with the R wing, that R, uh, optional mission is way much more way more fun. <laughs> so it's I almost don't... like you're pl It's almost like you're piloting a goddamn helicopter, which is never fun, by the way. Um, in fact, it's probably the most finicky form of air combat in the real world, too. Uh, no, I would say that belongs to the Dodo in GTA Three. So. What? We're still waiting for a successor to that piece of shit. <laughs> Wait, there's a dodo in GTA 3? Well, that's the name of the um, it's the name of the biplane oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that you can control in GTA 3. It's it so like slow, and it controls like shit. I thought yeah. that there was like an actual dodo that you could like oh, get on no. the back of. You're probably that, <laughs> an you actual dodo probably does fly better than that thing. <laughs> well, and, and you know what, Saints Row probably has something like that. <laughs> but uh, no. Gigarilla, I dubbed the unofficial fifth member of the Star Fox team in Zero. Ah, it's so adorable. I want one. It just needs its own R-wing, real size, like so that this big ass thing is standing on top of a little R-wing. <laughs> just try to shoot everybody down. Yeah, freaking I Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so you you can, I think you can like hack the um, I think you can hack the little guys down there. Um, yeah, you you can. I don't see the point. Uh, for metals. That's not good for metals. Oh. Uh, I think there's six total that you need to hack with the droid. Or you can use the walker hacking system, which you get later in the game. Yeah. Which Ted can technically do now, but he's doing it the intended way for your first time. Yeah, basically. Um, I'm kind of pretending that I don't have everything for this. Because, like, after, I think after this point, like, the game will say, you can now hack into stuff using the, um, using the walker or something to that effect. Just like but after... What's the point of the gyro wing? <laughs> Yeah, you don't use it after Zonus, which we'll be going yeah. to next part. Next part, yeah. Yeah. Also, if you want a good score, just hang around here and have the good gorilla bust shit, <laughs> basically. Yeah. They encourage you to go immediately to the teleport. Yeah, uh, but teleport yeah, portal. but he's my new best friend, and I want to... Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, give me a hug, you son of a bitch. Yes, You're really slow, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hugs for everyone. <laughs> and the thing is invincible. It can't get hurt by these guys at no, all. No, no. Th those kind of counterintuitive uh, requirements for, for getting score completion are just kind of, eh, well, uh, uh, I don't like them. Well, you do get a medal for getting a certain... There's five medals in each stage. Most stages, I should say. There's a few with only, like, one or two. But most main stages have five medals. You get one for beating a certain score requirement, which you can get just by blowing up shit good. Um, there's usually one for finding, like, three little hidden rings, and then you get the other handful by doing random shit. Like, sometimes they'll be hidden, like, behind a waterfall, and sometimes you have to do stuff like hack certain things. They're, most of them are pretty obtuse, honestly, I will, I will say. Especially the ones in all range mode sections where they expect you to, like, walk into every single hangar in Corneria. To check to see. To walk if they... to the corner of every single. Yeah, to make to see if one will pop up. You don't see it in there. You have to walk inside, and then it will appear, <laughs> which is bizarre. <laughs> and it's part of the reason why I don't ever plan on getting all of the the medals in this game. I just I could not care enough to do it. Like there, it said I needed to get 220 points total in order to get the score medal, and then you can get the rest by doing that other stuff. Basically, is how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah.